Welcome to Help with Natalie Cuomo, the podcast about a girl who just can't help herself. Wow. Welcome to another episode of Help with Natalie Cuomo. It is a chaotic morning here at Gas Digital Studios. I am here with the incredible Chloe LeBranch. How are you, Chloe? I am so good. And I'm here with the amazing Lev Fur. How well, are you? Good. Good to be here. <coughs> I've actually listened to this pod a couple times. <coughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he, yeah. He keep, jerks off to it. No, keep your enemies close, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, that was some advice that I was given. Oh, really? That's yeah. why I'm having you on. Who gave you that advice? That's fucking... Who was that? That fucking? was literally advice I was given. Man. Someone, Paul, who gave that advice? Pat Dixon. Pat Dixon. He said, he, oh, oh you know what's funny? I haven't it. put that episode out. That's the episode I'm putting out tomorrow. He's a really good guy to get advice from. And, yeah. And, yeah <laughs> Pat Dixon. Great. And he said, keep your enemies close. <laughs> Dude, I did, a ro- I did a roast battle when I first started doing comedy against Pat Dixon, and he destroyed me. He said, uh, Chloe LeBranch to comedy is the seagull to the plane in Sully. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, so that's a movie where a seagull flies into the jet, into the propeller of Sully, and the entire plane goes down and, like, 500 people die. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to continue. This is a really exciting day for a lot of reasons. I I, um... This is the first time I've ever looked Lev in the eyes and made eye contact or even spoken to him, so that's exciting. Chloe and I have rekindled our love. That's exciting. Yes, yes. And uh, I have brought three new co-hosts to my show. Um, I'd like to welcome Kix, Isabel, and Blathers to help with Natalie. (laughs) Was that supposed to be a sound drop or something? I thought we'd have a sound drop, Paul. We did not discuss that. I know, but but, we're on a... Me and Paul were... Be an artist, Paul. I love hot chicks just think the plan they have no, in no, their no. head is we just going to come out on the soundboards later. We got like, this. Know. We got this, Paul. Let's go. Okay, ready? So I was thinking our three new co-hosts, Blathers, Isabel, and Kix. Blathers, what is, what is that origin? So <laughs> I have recently retreated into the dark world of Animal Crossing and where I have been living for the last, you know few month and a half i really love it so i really love animal crossing i've been streaming on twitch a lot and uh these are three prominent characters in animal crossing and i figured what better way to promote my twitch and uh what by the time this comes out i'll have given away a free nintendo switch Lite on my twitch channel wow which is pretty exciting and i figured i'll have these guys join me i'm actually just here to enter that contest yeah (laughs) (laughs) i'm really looking for it's pretty good i mean it's a free nintendo switch so what is the point of these, though? I'm guessing Lewis just didn't let you put these in the house. So you're like, they go here now? They make me happy. Okay. I, I don't, all right. Let's, I feel like I feel both of your chaotic energies like intensely right I'm now. I'm not doing anything, Lev. I took all my meds today. I did as well. Your hand was shaking when I fucking said hello. Chloe and I are on the same meds. That's because I... <laughs> starstruck? Yeah, I'm so starstruck around <laughs> Lev. <laughs> So, love, I like to start the podcast. Um, I have shakes. That's just part of, like, who I am. Strawberry okay. or vanilla? Just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love, I like to start the podcast asking the best advice you have ever received. Uh, right now, it's a lot of, it's a lot focus on carbs. You have a hair, like, right here. Oh, thank you, Chloe. That's, that's, that's great for the air. Yeah, you got it. I get it? Okay. Um... I don't know. It depends. Life, mental health. What are we talking about? Career. The, I feel like I've what? been lucky that I've gotten a lot of good advice in my life. Share it with All us. from Jordan Peterson. Okay, cool. So what's the best advice you've ever received? Man. Um, that's, that is like such a fucking. I asked you this a week ago. I know. To but prepare. I had a chaotic day too. 
Also, I'm not doing homework for a podcast. That's another. You're too good for my so, podcast. So you've been. I'm not saying I'm here. What do you mean uh, too good? You're too good pro- to think about my podcast. You've been projecting on both of us. Yeah, uh, you. Oh, you two are so. Chloe, good. he is. He's projecting on the two of us. He Wim, really is. Women love these fucking made up you need terms help like with projecting. Those shakes? I'm not shaking. Are you okay? What is? Are you feeling anxious? Is, is this what being gaslit is? Are you feeling so being chaotic? Gay is... No, I'm feeling. I am feeling gay. <laughs> <laughs> Left. Is there a reason you went for the diet snapple? Yes. Look at him. I, I was hoping this fucking studio <laughs> would have Red Bulls, and they didn't. So this was. Uh, the they only don't. Left. My dear, what is the best advice you can think of at the I moment? I can't. I don't know. I don't know what the best. I'm here to give you guys advice. Exactly. What's the best advice you've ever received? Share it with us. Corinne gave you really good advice once. What? Put my kettlebell in front of the fridge? Yeah. <laughs> to keep it shut. <laughs> it didn't work, though. <laughs> it was the only time I moved it. Um, I uh, Some good co- comedy advice I got was don't try to impress comedians. Mm, because mm-hmm. especially if you're like a young comic, just about everything, a, a nothing will make comedians like you when you're a young comedian. Like they're just gonna shit on you as they should for everything you do. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, as you know, you build an audience playing not to them and to to other idiots on, on the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So. You definitely should not be playing to com- comedians. Can't do much for you. It always bothered me when people thought like I. If people think that you're like trying to get someone in your car- somewhere in your career by dating a comic, like no, if I want to get someone somewhere in my career, I'm gonna date a producer, a casting agent, a fucking movie director. I'm not gonna date. She's planning. She's planning the level up. I'm not gonna date a goddamn comic. Yes. What the fuck's a comic gonna do for Did me? I'm gonna be that? their opener. I'm gonna show people where in. the bathroom <laughs> is after they're set. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's. I agree with that. You know, I was. I wanted to date a you know a big a big shot, but then he ended up getting locked up. So, <laughs> so he really was a big shot. Hey, okay, <laughs> Weinstein. Weinstein could do a lot better, Chloe. Than me. <laughs> <laughs> you can at least get get somebody reliable. Chloe, what was it about Weinstein that really you know stood out to you? Hunger Games. Uh, I love eating at the Tribeca Grill. Um, I don't know. Let's. There's a laundry list. He's done every great film. You know. He has done a lot of great films. Yeah. Got to give there him. Hasn't the, been a, there hasn't been a good movie out since that guy got locked up. <laughs> so okay, Lev. That's kind of weirdly true, actually. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Hollywood's dead. They said that that what was that that gay movie that came out the. Uh... Oh, uh, call me by your name. No, no, the other one. Oh, I know what you're talking With about. Brokeback Mountain. No, it's called, I wish I knew how to quit you. <laughs> it's like it's called The Power of the Dog or some shit. Everybody, that movie was gay. It sucked. It really yeah, sucked. it was so boring. I expected so much more from that. Have you yeah. seen that? It was on Netflix. I don't watch movies. I play Animal Crossing. Yeah, nobody with these three stuffed animals building a wall in front of them is. Do you have a, Natalie? Fucking... Do you have a favorite film? Um, no. Really? What about like uh, as a child? I wasn't allowed to participate in things with a moving screen. Wow. That's actually my girlfriend's kind of like that. That's uh, similar. Well, your girlfriend is texting random phone numbers at <laughs> night. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that thing that you told me that you were going to do a joke about it. How? how her, never mind. Oh, uh, the. Why would you got to start saying things that have context to uh, people listening? Like I don't, I don't know. My girlfriend's mom died. Yes, and so she would text the, her mom's phone number. You know, like once a year and be years like, I, I miss you and, you know, and she did this for years. Like, you know, I miss you and, you know, I would do anything to have you back. You know, that kind of stuff. And the other year she got a text back. <laughs> That's scary. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think it's your mom. You know, I don't think she like faked her death. <laughs> and the text was from a big black dude in New Jersey. And he was like, bitch, quit blowing up my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, he's he's got a point. You know what I mean? Like, imagine you're this guy and fucking it's 430 in the morning and you're getting I love you so much and I do anything to have you back. And your chick's laying next to you like, who the fuck is that? It's like, how do you explain that? Block her number. Well, I mean, that's probably. <laughs> you have to block your dead mom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that's a result of no, not the growing dead mom up should with block the, his... the etiquette of not being able to be around technology. But th- this was shocking to me because I thought that when you die, 
that they retire your phone number. Like they out of respect. Your Facebook is still there, ab, ab, your Instagram, no. everything. But they just give your phone number when you die, they just give it to a black guy that, in Jersey. That's, like, that's well, no, happened. no, that's not exactly how it works. It's so in the, policy. in the I had to switch fam I had to switch phone numbers uh recently. I got a new phone number. It wasn't because like I was I was avoiding a drug dealer or something. It was because I got kicked off the family plan. Um <clears throat> so I switched from my dad's plan to my mom's. So I just moved family plans. And um, that was actually because people came to look at our house in Vermont. And when they came to look at it, me and one of my brothers laid on the floor and we're like, we've got Corona. Get out. You know, this you guys are really making me feel sane. And it's nice. Anyway, so I went to the <laughs> yeah, I, I went to the AT&T <laughs> store and I was like, I want a 212 number for my cell phone. And they're like, we don't have an Anna. And I was like, how many fucking people died during the pandemic that are old? How can you not have any two on twos for me? I found that insane. Yeah, have you ever been in the house while your parents do a showing of your house? Like, you ever, yes, you know what I mean. My yeah, my little brother actually when they were showing our your house. parents were homeowners. Yeah, my parents they had <laughs> subtle flex. You guys, they had a house, <clears throat> and uh, what's I remember one time I was like I had the flu. This was like. I don't know. I was like 14. Mm -hmm. So I'm like dead in bed. I'm the only one home. And my parents are like, we're selling the house. So we have people coming. I'm like, are you insane? Like, I, I have the flu in my room, like locked in there. <laughs> oh, what are they going to do? They have to show the house. They have I to remember. sell it. Yeah. But so this like fucking white bitch real estate lady, she's like 50. She's right. knocking on the door I'm right. in. And right. she's like with these with these like a, a young, excited couple. And she's like, oh, can, we're just can we come in? I go, no, I'm I have the flu in here. Like I'm green. I'm sitting yeah. up in bed like the exorcist. And she goes, I go, do not come in here. She goes, it's just going to be a second. And she opens the door. The look of the couple's face, they go, oh my God. Yeah. And they slammed the door shut. And they got mad at me. I'm like, <laughs> Don't come in here. You like, know, you could have put yourself together. You could have gone to the bathroom. Are you crazy? <laughs> and then they open the bathroom. He's like, ah! <laughs> no, I mean, you. they need to sell the home. It doesn't matter. I'm like, yo, I, there's a fucking sick kid in the room. Like, That's throw true. it up I and guess. shit. That's, and, but they just, like, shamed me. Like, you know I what I mean? It. Well, one time, our my childhood home there's, growing. This is story time, I guess. Yeah, well, my childhood t growing up when my parents were getting divorced, one of my little brothers, there was an open house to end. We weren't, no one was home. We weren't allowed to be home, but he, he took the liberty of um, doing some art in his room bef right, right before the open house. Right. And he um, shattered all of the pictures, frames in his room, and he took marker and wrote all over the walls, ghosts never leave, all friends die. So when the real estate agent came in with people during the open house, there was like 30 people coming. They were just like... Oh my God! That's you amazing. They see it. And they're like, "We'll take it." <laughs> they're yeah. like, this is about right. Yeah. Wow. They're like, "Okay, Banksy." <laughs> but you'll always sell the house. They did. They sell the house. Yeah, it took like ten years. But Chloe, what's the best advice you've ever received? Uh, I was about nine years old. I got some great advice from my father. Um, he told me, um, he "Told me it's not a secret if you tell anybody else." And he also told me that is the advice. Why did he want you to? Father. Why did he want you to keep a secret at nine? I was like, Dad, can I tell you something? And he goes, Listen, Chloe, it's not a secret if you tell anybody else. What did he not want you to tell him? I have no idea. It sounds like he was molesting you. What were you going no, to tell absolutely him? Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Not him. No, I wasn't being molested. Are you kidding me? Not at that my comedy age. would be way better if I was. Yeah. Um, my, I, and my drug of choice would have been heroin. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, and then he also once told me, um, he told me three things, actually. Great advice. He also told me once, um, I was like, Dad, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to like, when I was like 12 or like 10, I was like, I'm going to write a book. He goes, Chloe, never tell anyone you're going to do something until it's already done. I love that. And That's then, cool. and then one I really like that. And then one time I think him and my, my mom were in a fight. About, oh, no, no, no. This is what it was. I was going I like to my first school dance. I was like 12. And uh, my dad looks at me and he goes, uh, just so you know, jealousy is the worst quality in a woman. And I was like. 
Okay, I'm off to the dance. <laughs> wow, wow. Let me write these two things down. Number three. one. There's three. No, no, I mean, only, honestly. Only two are good. The guy's a legend, I gotta say. Number, here are the two. Go- it's not a secret if you tell someone, eh. But this one. That is true. It's no, not a secret. True. Yeah, but if you, if you tell one other person, it's no longer okay, a secret. Okay, who cares? I think the things that are good at jealousy, not attractive. It's the, my, I was going to a dance when I was 12. <laughs> he a goes, number one. is healthy. But it's not attractive to show it. Never show your ass. You still have his hair. And number two, flirt, flirt, flirt. Okay. And then also, wow, great advice. Don't tell anyone. What was it? Don't um, don't tell anyone Anyone you're going to do something something until until you've already done done it. Ah, that's so I mean, it's it's hard to take it all in when you're- How old are you? 27. How old are you? 25. Don't talk down to me. I'm not. I was genuinely just asking. I don't know. (laughs) I I would have no. I'm doubt. over here with my old saggy balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's your five year plan? Don't die. <laughs> but there's actually a lot of research to that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to take those all of the, that advice in between the ages of like nine and twelve. But honestly, those are three very solid. And you're like, and that was the last I ever saw him. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. he's three. a smart man. He's extreme. My dad's a very smart guy. Successful. Good guy. Good guy. Yeah. I like both wow. my parents a lot. But there's research that shows if you tell people, like, I'm going to do this thing, you know, people get excited when you say that, so they give That's you That's enough some, endorphins. Yes. You already get the validation. You get that. So then you're like, why the fuck would I do it now? I, nah. got, I got to feel it. Anytime I'm like, I'm going to clean my room, then I just like take a clump and take a nap. Yeah. It feels so good anticipating, like, I'm doing something on Saturday that I'm very excited about. What is it? I can't tell you. Good. There we go. It's clicking. And I'm so stoked. She's going to shoot up a high school. (laughs) (laughs) There are going to be no students there. (laughs) She's like, I can't tell you, but you will hear about it. I am so stoked about this, and I can't tell anyone until it's done, and it's going to be, it's a nice little... I love you. (laughs) Just do a tasting (laughs) set. I have to say I love that for you, but I love you. (laughs) I am very. I like. I want to know what, like, what has you stressed? What, like, what's going on with you? You said you had a chaotic. What day. do you need help I'm with? I'm curious. <sighs> so just let it out. I feel I can tell you. We got to get something out. Well, so. I did just get in a fight with a stranger before I came in. Uh, it happens oh, okay. to me all the time. I was driving here and I was like a little late. Okay. And uh, there was a park perfect parking spot, and there was. A fucking man standing in the parking spot holding the parking spot. Mm. Mm. This is not that interesting of a story, but I pulled up to it and I said, you can't do that. Smart. And Which he totally a, can. You can't stand in a parking spot of and hold it. Of course you can. Uh, maybe, maybe, his, maybe his car was invisible, Natalie. No. He goes, I'm getting a delivery. I'm getting a delivery. And I was like, uh, you what just is it, simply a Tesla? I said, what's your company? He said, it's a plumbing company. I was like, well, what's the name of the company? He's like, it's none of your business. And I'm like, you absolutely cannot. This is completely illegal. You, I, I need to park here. Yeah, but people do that all the time. You can't do it. I and do that. He wound up being like, all right, you can have the parking spot. And then I said, fuck you. And I drove away and I didn't take the parking spot. Why would you do that? that? That's a lose-lose. You started a fight, and you didn't even fucking get the benefit of the fight. Yeah, what are you going to do? Bring Why the, did you bring the gun to the middle school and not use it this weekend? <laughs> the thing is that I didn't want him. I was like, I didn't. Na- we created so much animosity, I didn't even want the spot anymore. Yeah, but now oh, yeah. you just have to drive around for another hour. I found the mad. spot, but. Oh, because he could have, like, keyed it or something. Yes. <clears throat> Lev, do you ever fight with No, she, did, she wasn't even thinking about that. I was that. thinking that. I was. I don't know. I think you just saw a fucking Chloe threw an excuse up no, for no, you. No, 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 I was. I literally, I can call my friend that I was on the phone with right now and say, did I say, is he going to keep my car? If I, if a lady started yelling at me and was like, you can't hold this spot. And then I finally, I was like, all right, just take the spot. And then she drove off. I would start a podcast about how women stink. <laughs> that's what I would do. Like, that's crazy. Like, we, I already conceded the thing. You sound so busy. But that's like... But that, I don't know. It just feels like uh, you didn't even want the spot in the first place. Um, I did want the spot. It was really next next to the studio. It was right. Mm, perfect spot. I just saw his fucking stupid fat ass standing there holding the spot. <laughs> and I was like, this is completely, un- he was his dumb smile, expecting was delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I was holding a spot like 30 minutes ago. I don't know. Was that you? It was me. Anyway, why am I feeling stressed? I don't know. I'm just... Uh, Do you feel like you, your adrenaline just got pumped up from that? From the conflict? <sighs> that was a conflict that arose. And then, you know, I overslept a little bit. And it's just a lot going on in my life right now. Same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. This whole life thing's pretty easy, guys. Not for me. 
<laughs> it's a lot. Life is a lot. I don't understand how people do it. Like, <clears throat> I don't understand how people wake up every day, go to the grocery store, go on the subway, do that all. What, what I'm realizing. Without drinking. Well, what I'm realizing <laughs> as I get. How do you go grocery shopping sober? Boring. <laughs> How do you eat food without smoking weed? I don't eat. I don't smoke weed. I don't drink that much. I, I love drinking. It's fun. But I, I, what you get older and realize is like all the- Older. Oh, my God. No, Lev. I'm saying like as somebody- He's been saying this since he was 20, since he was 18. Yeah. He's like, as I get older. No, but the things that we look at as lazy comics because we're undisciplined as fuck mm -hmm. is like- Speak for yourself. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, but- it, we're like, oh, going to the grocery store, like having a fucking, like things that are to do's, mm -hmm. those are actually what give you a structure in life. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like your body instinctively just wants to be a fucking piece of shit, wants to sleep till 4 p.m. If Like it just feels, feels better than coming, sleeping that fucking late. So then you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. But all those things you have to ignore. You have to ignore like every instinct and temptation, to like actually live a good life. Like, I just don't come enough. <laughs> I don't think that's your problem. People are saying you come too much. Who says that? Stand. Who? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> the stand. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was funny. Yeah, I guess. but it wasn't real. I. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's how you say it, everything in life is. That I've... was funny, but that definitely happened in my head. I got in a really big fight with a stranger recently. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Chappelle. No. <laughs> no, the ACP people. ACPA. The ASPCA. The animal people. You know them? Yeah, what happened? This is what happened. So you know how they're walking around like Union Square and they're like, do you have time for the animals? Do you have time for the animals? Mm -hmm. And I walked by. They didn't ask me if I had time. I didn't think anything of it at first. And then, they, and then they're asking everyone else. And then I was like, this is a little weird. They didn't ask me. So I walked by again. They didn't ask me again. I was like, mm, what, they don't think I like animals? So I walked by a third time. They didn't ask me. So I tapped the woman on the shoulder. I said, excuse me, you not think I like dogs or something? And she was like, no, nothing personal. I was like, I fucking love animals. I have three Cocker Spaniels. She goes, okay, well, do you have time? I go, no, I'm very busy. <laughs> Did this really happen? Yeah, I swear to God. Lashing out is fun, isn't it? Yeah. That is, that is a bad practice in life. It's a bad practice. If my girlfriend lashed out, it would. Who's your girlfriend? Is she a She's adorable. You How long have you been why together? Why would you say my girlfriend's name? Can you can you bleep that? We Paul? actually have to cut that. Bleep that, Paul. I okay. don't I don't need this audience knowing who my girlfriend. I'm is. sorry. This audience. Just any gas adjacent. So. I once gave up my address on RAP. <laughs> <laughs> why? I don't remember, but they bleeped it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're all gonna have to take a deep breath and reel it in. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy that you did that. That's that's. It's a... not live. It's How okay. old one of them? Yes, Paul. I have a really good video to send you. This is gonna really bring some happiness to the podcast. Okay. Um, no one cares. It's yeah. Fine. So no, I, Sorry, I don't date comics. Except anymore. for me. We never dated Chloe. We. You took this... me. You bought me dinner. I buy everybody dinner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't think I bought you dinner. I'm sure it was like two, twenty bucks, and I said, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> Oh, okay. What? what? <laughs> Money's on the nightstand. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> He's in love with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we never dated. No. I, but he, but I, he did. I did put up a photo together of us on my Instagram. You put up a photo together of us and deleted it right after. Well, actually, it was just because Lev did my podcast. It wasn't like a dating photo. Cool. <laughs> just fucking around, man. I know. Paul, I'm um, texting you this video. I think it's fantastic. Natalie, I'll put it back. Are up. you able to email it? It's it it's it's uh, too large for the file. For an email? That's what it says. I'm sorry. You don't have to play it. It's fine. It's fine. It's just a cute. She's little doing video. the parking spot thing. Again. Okay. She's this... like, I'm sending you this video. No, you don't have to play it. Don't I think this it. is a, a help I need. Wells Fargo, we noticed no, a few. No, I need help. Debit card usage. Yeah, what do you need help with? Wait, let's listen fucking, to this, guys. Let's jump in here. Wells Fargo, we noticed a few. Do you want to hold a toy? A few no. debit this card usage kicks. in unf unfamiliar locations. I don't even have a Wells Fargo account. <sighs> guys, that's spam. Guys, let's talk. I have do need help with a few things. If you'd like to listen and put your phone down, Chloe, this is incredibly rude. Get her ass. That's right. <laughs> confront it. <clears throat> Chloe and I. Chloe has been there for me for a long time. Thank you. I'll never that will it. change. 
Well, it has dropped out <laughs> at times and then comes back. The first thing I said to you at the stand is I said, you're flaky. Well, it's because I go to rehab. I know. It doesn't change it. <laughs> Any, anytime someone brings up Chloe, it's in the context of, yeah, we just started talking again. <laughs> Like you are not a reliable. You've been reliable. With you're me, reliable. Because, you are reliable. Yeah, because yeah. I set boundaries with you. Well, no, Lev. Lev actually gives it to me like very straightforward. Whenever I like do something kind of wrong, Lev, you'll be like, "Listen, you better. You need to get it together." Like, and blah blah blah. People care about you, but you need to stop fucking up. You need to get your shit together. Like when I had had a bad relapse and stuff, you were very very helpful and very like. Aww. Like, we do, like, joke around a lot. You were just like, you need to go get help. You need to go away. Get your shit together. Like, a lot of people do care. And, you know, you are talented. Oh, yeah, I was trying to trick and- you into sex. <laughs> well, here's one thing. <laughs> one thing I'll say about Chloe, and I don't mean to. I'm not even kissing your ass because I don't want to. And there's no ass to kiss? No, she has a good ass. I got a booty. She does have a good <laughs> ass. You should fix your hair, though. Right now, it's crazy. But... Um, <laughs> The women always give and take, you know, she gave you a compliment, fucking wrecked your whole day. No, after. it was crazy. You don't want your hair. Okay, whatever. Anyway, one thing I'll say about Chloe is I feel like there are a lot, like, you genuinely care about stand-up, and there are a lot of people in comedy that don't care about stand-up. Like, if I tell Chloe, like, for example, we were on the phone the other day, and I was like, oh, I have an idea for this premise I just thought of. You will genuinely help me think about, like, tags, help me think about my joke. It's so rare that I have friends in comedy that actually give a fucking shit about stand-up and care about stand-up and aren't just doing this for attention. And I genuinely... Who th- are you friends with? Name, name. Well, you were, it was funny because you were also said to me, you were like, actually, never mind. It's it's stupid. It's stupid. And I said, no, just tell me the premise. And you're like, no, it's a stupid idea, actually. I'm like, just tell me the premise. And Be- then you told me the premise. Mm-hmm. And then it ended up not being stupid. And I said it on stage last night for the first time, and it, it did okay. Yeah, but and it was good. And I've was like, actually still been thinking about it. I have another idea for it. It's like it's it. so fucking. I know you're like, oh, who are your friends? No, there's a lot of people in stand up that don't give a fuck about stand up. I there is. I I feel like I don't have any friends in comedy that are like that. Like, well, that's because our group chat is like. It's ever- all like comic. Like I was in the green room the other day with like a bunch of comics, like, and we were just literally pitching. Mm-hmm. bits and tat like even a guy like norman he'll be like he was like let's fucking i'm sorry do it. i'm not buddy buddy with mark norman and joe list i mean well no it's not, it's not, not the I'm, only guy hey, joe like, what's up what about this bit well that's because it's a lot of um of um of up and comers yeah like that a, they don't right. it's a whole new breed of comics that yeah. are coming but out that like don't care most about comics com- in a comedy club if you say hey what do you think of this idea sure go, but like, like people that like i feel comfortable enough to like like a genuine new premise that I feel like I don't I don't know is this fu- I genuinely genuinely I'm like I just thought of this is this funny I'm not comfortable going up to someone that I'm like friends with but like I see at a club and have a conversation with I'm not like that comfortable yeah, yeah. saying that so there aren't that many like up and coming comedians like that I could or like that I could be like hey I genuinely don't know. Is this a funny premise that I thought of that I could like run it by? Do you know what I mean? I guess I could I could definitely see that because like these new I see like a lot of these new kids coming up. They're mm-hmm. like fucking insane. Like they're vlogging and like walking into comedy clubs with the cameras. They have no material. They've been doing comedy for three weeks. Like, well, I'm not it's saying that nuts. extreme. I'm just saying like, well, yeah, it's just like there aren't. I, I mean, I also don't have that many like very close friends in comedy. Like I have friends, but yeah. I just don't really trust anybody. Also, so you can't talk material with Lewis. Well, no, <laughs> can't really talk anything with him. But yeah, I just feel like um... <laughs> oh, so that would been a great shots fired fucking soundboard right there. <laughs> Paul, can you do us anything on a soundboard? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just like I just I just miss like being able to tell someone a premise and them actually caring and being like, oh, that actually is funny, or like, no, that's not funny. Like I have a couple other friends that they can run things by, but like I'm talking about like. Not a super like I'm really close with Jessica Curson. Yeah. But I'm only gonna run a premise by her if I know that it's funny because I care what she fuck and I care what Chloe yeah, thinks. But you don't want to. It's Jessica Curson. She's on a like it's Jessica. It's, no, I'm Kirsten. not gonna be like, hey Jessica, is this funny? And then it winds up being really stupid. I'm mm-hmm. only like, there's a level yeah before. If that. you want her to really respect you as a comic, you got to call her at like 3 a.m. on a Tuesday and be like, look, I have an idea. <laughs> what do you know about toasters? If you and, <laughs> the bit and just listen to her, like <laughs> hit her, hit her daughter and answer your question, like <laughs> it'll be. But you know what I mean? Like I don't know. It's weird hearing you say, like, "What are you talking about?" All my friends, I run bits for, and then they're just little, little, little. like I don't. Well, that's what you you have to. Uh, Warren Buffett, actually, this is great advice. Warren Buffett said, like, you are um, a, like 
the level of person, I'm going to butcher this, the level of person you are uh, is um, the five people you surround yourself right. by. Right. So it's like you have to start, like when I left comedy because I was in rehab for a while, when I got back into comedy, I started hanging out. Because I've been around all, all these comics for a long time, but then I was um, – away and everyone else started to get you know much better past at all the clubs getting credits and all this stuff and i was just at you know ground zero you were literally at ground zero i was, at, I was just i was at 9 11 <laughs> <laughs> you know i got in trouble for smoking cigarettes at that memorial I, I never i guess it's not a good place to have smoke um god damn it chloe <gasps> there we go. Are you kidding me, Paul? With yeah, that, Paul. with that, right? Paul, with that, I love that. Paul. Was the worst thing I could have said as a New Yorker. Um, I love Lev not holding on to kicks. Shows that you're not really in touch with your sensitive side. I'm very in touch with my. The sensitive fact that side. you won't even touch kicks. I did touch them. Why? I'm not going to point to where. <laughs> point on the doll to where you were hurt. Where Bestiality. The man you. Bestiality. Um, but what I was going to say is like, he's like, you are you are the equivalent of the five people that you surround yourself with. And when I got out of treatment, like all my friends had like, you know, like surpassed me or, or whatever. And I remember when I came back to New York. <laughs> it's a very funny thing to whatever. New York. When I came back to New York, I, I used to be passed at New York Comedy Club. And they, I came back and I was like, they're like, sorry, you're unpassed while you were away. Like everyone got so much better than you. And I was like, what? I can I say that on this podcast? I don't care. Yeah, they've the they've pushed my audition for six years. They haven't let me re audition. That's a lot of people. So 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 some, sometimes sometimes when I would relapse, I would email them like, "Hey, I'd love to audition." <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because and Amy's, sort of drug a, Amy's like I'm like hey, it's, I would do it like deep deep pandemic I'd be like hey <laughs> how's everything going love to come in and audition <laughs> like we're in full shutdown I really maybe think we cut that from the podcast um, but anyways I think there's like a, yeah I think, sorry but what, can I just say something I just want to finish do you mind <gasps> is that mean give me the kicks I just wanted to just say about the Warren Buffett thing is <laughs> give it back. I'm not doing all. No, that. but what I want to say, Natalie, is um, I what I did bricks. was I just went and when I came back, I went and I just started to hang out with people who were doing better than me, who I respected. Yes, I mean I wasn't being annoying yes, as course. like, <laughs> but I was, <laughs> I was really fucking, naming names and going after the big Chloe dogs. Is. Whatever, fuck that. He didn't. I asked him for a spot the other night, and he was like, uh, "No, ask Natalie." And then Natalie was like, "Yeah, of course." But uh, nice, nice guy. But like, I, I, I went and I asked my friend. I went and I hung out with people who I respected, who were nice, who were always very nice to me, who were be better than me at comedy. And I sat with them and I listened. Well, one thing and I watched, and and it helped me grow. One thing Lewis has said to me that is very good advice, and I think someone else said. Sorry to him, if I was just a cunt. You weren't a cunt. I love you. One thing that he said is like, you're allowed to have one unfunny friend. I think that's really good advice. I, you shouldn't even have one unfunny friend. I would love for Lewis. He's like, for me, that's Big J. You know, <laughs> I, I carry him and I pull the weight all the podcast. Like, <laughs> he's like, you get it. But I, I feel like it's not about, it's not even, to me, it's not about like, I feel like that's almost a separate conversation, though. An unfunny friend versus a funny like. You can. Why does it matter how many unfunny friends you have? Like, who gives a shit? Well, a you want of... you do want to look up to the people that you're around, yeah. and you want to feel like inspired. Like, there are certain co like okay, Hannah Burner. When I saw her recently do her new stuff at the stand, and I literally was like, I want to go home and write. I'm very inspired by her. Like, she's a good friend, and I really fucking like. I'm very inspired by every like, time what she's I watch doing. her. I'm like, I she's gotta, fucking killing it. I gotta get. I gotta get the notes out. No. What? What? I'm just trashing her. Oh. Why? I, I I'm opened, friends with her. Fuck her. I opened for her. <laughs> and, no, she's um, like really writing a lot. It's really inspiring when you see someone that's like, oh, you're writing a lot and you're doing real, like, I like being around people that are make me want to go home and write and inspire me. And like, I feel like it's just, yeah. If, it's, if, I'm just going to say. Yeah. And I'm friends with Hannah. Yeah. But if that's the one making you do that. Fuck you. You got to start watching the fucking, the really. No. The people have been doing this for 30 years. Joe List. No, but seriously. Joe List is, it's like crazy how much. No, but Lev. Like, I like, feel like, them. here's the thing. Hannah really relates to a female audience in a way yeah. that's like, 
it's hard for maybe you to understand. Like I struggle with relating to women. Like my entire audience is men. 99% Instagram followers and YouTube is all dudes. Hannah has found a way to like really connect to women. It's not easy as a woman to like get other women to relate to you. Like, well, because she was on Bravo Summer House. That's why yeah, that sure, was her but, audience built in. Yeah, but she does. She connects to women. It's like, well, yeah, it's she, not easy to do that as a, as an attractive woman to connect mm-hmm. to other women. They love her. I opened for her in Texas. And uh, you know what's cool about Hannah is she like, um, she's very much knows knows like she's like knows that she's new to comedy and you know we are talking and she's like I know you've been doing comedy for a long time and um a lot of people I guess like when they go on the road they don't like to bring people who have been doing comedy for longer times or or whatever and she was like Chloe like I don't it doesn't bother me if you go up before me and do 30 and you just murder and then like I'm going up and I'm you know working on all my new stuff because like you know she had just started right she was like I just want a good fucking show yeah and it's also it's you not know? to say that I'm not inspired by like legends like Mark Norman Jessica Herson inspires me every day or fucking like Joe List all of these people inspire me it doesn't take away from it if like someone like her inspires me but it's like You should, every person in your life, you should watch, like, you should, like, I want to get that feeling from them. I don't know. No, I've definitely, I've had that from people even that, like, are direct peers, like, started my class. Yeah. There was a, I saw somebody recently where I was watching them and I was like, I got that same feeling of, like, oof, I got to fucking, I got to hit the notebook. Because it is just like it's killing stronger shit. when that comes from a peer. Like, yeah, of that's course, true. when I watch fucking someone that's been doing it for 30 years, I'm like, oh, I want to go home and write. But when I watch someone that's my peer, I'm like, Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's, it's an even yeah. stronger it's inspiration. You. Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You know who I always who I see with their notebook is that that kills me is uh, Ian Lara. Sometimes He's out with, it, with his notebook. Yeah. And I'm like, what have I been doing? Yes. I'll take like three notes on my phone and then I see his book and I'm just like, God damn it. Like, you're, you're like, you're killing it. You're hilarious. And then you just have like your and you're really I, I forget that like to be a comic, you really got to put the work in. Yeah. I used to sit and write when I was starting, and then I just got to a phase where I felt like I was dealing with so much other stuff that I, I just started going on stage and babbling, and now I'm starting to sit and write more, and it's it really pays off. Or just, like, setting an intention. Like, last night I did a show for literally seven people, but I was like, I'm just going to try to get that new joke out, and I did, and I was like, okay, I set an intention for that <laughs> set. Like, yeah. you got to take a step back sometimes and be like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. So, so what? What is is comedy the thing that you're like? I feel like comedy is not the thing that's stressing you out. Yeah, because you're doing great. Like I feel like you tend to do well with things you pick up. Like you seem you're like a quick learner. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Did we help? That was fantastic. Thank you. (laughs) Like yeah, stand up. How long have you been doing comedy now? Four years. Okay, yeah. So you're that's a sweet spot. That's that's like the last year that it's fun. Did you remember uh, that article that Mark Norman had like uh, a long time ago where he was saying how like he had been doing he, right when he had start, like at eight years in all of a sudden he just started bombing. Mm-mm. There was like some article that was like a really great article to read about how he was like doing comedy for like eight years and then all of a sudden he just started bombing for for some reason and he had to just reevaluate his comedy. I can't remember what it was, yeah. but I remember reading it and. I found it like very interesting. It's an emotional journey. Yeah, I mean, obviously, and he's he's always a killer, and then he kept killing. But I don't know. Paul, it's, it's it's weird how comedy just works. Am I always like this, Paul, or am I more chaotic today? You're always like this. Really? Mm-hmm. That is crazy. Mm-hmm. That is really crazy. Why? I don't know. Like, I just I I feel like I'm a perceptive person. Just like seeing your energy today, I was like, it was intense. Like I would, you know what I mean? Like I would, that's nuts that you have that inside you all the time. Natalie, what do you feel like if you have a bad set? How does it make you feel like after you go off stage? If you say, say you bomb, mm-hmm. not, um, do you get up? Does it upset you or how do, how do you handle it emotionally? Well, it's humiliating. <laughs> okay. And then you want to, Go back on. St- I think the first thing I'll think is, when's my next set? Really? Yeah. What about you, Liv? It's never happened. Shut up. I've never just not. Actually, look. So the reason that I have this podcast <laughs> yeah. is because I feel like the image that I give off on social media is like too 
curated and I'm just and and maybe even in my act and okay. I'm just trying to bring more of myself into everything that I do yeah. and like I am an in, I'm a very intense person I don't have my shit together and so like this podcast is just me trying to bring myself uh-huh. more into everything that I do do you do therapy and all that shit yeah, yeah. see you know what I have a ish my therapist says I'm like a masochist me too. Well, he doesn't say that, but I know it. Well, because I, I like when I bomb. Sometimes I, I don't. It doesn't bother me at it sh- all. It shouldn't after a- a- after after I bomb. It's different. I like sometimes I like it because I'm like, I'm a, I'm like keeps me human. No, but after, sometimes after I bomb, I'm like, okay, Even it, God's bleed. It, 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 it's part of comedy. I'm not working. I'm not working hard enough. Well, advice that I received recently was rejection is God's protection. Yeah, that's, that's like an AA slogan. It is. That's really? what they. Yeah, that's what they say. That's someone from AA told me that. I, oh, really? I love it. It actually really has Helps been helping ups. me. But then when you kill, what do you feel like? Do you feel like do you, does it make you want to write more, or do you feel like get do you get like content in your in your comedy it's encouraging to do well for okay. sure i feel like after a while it changes to the point where like with, with me whenever i'd have like a great side i'd be like did you all fucking see that like <laughs> yeah like guys like and i would like rally everybody for around. you every time you had a great set everyone's always like ah no you're like you're always like did you tape that one and <laughs> joe harari's always like Man, no, <laughs> never it. he's like i forgot <laughs> <laughs> but now, when but when you said like bombing actually shouldn't feel like failure after a certain point because right. like and with your when you want to pitch premises to people like before you've done it on stage sometimes it's harmful to pitch the premise because like sometimes people just yeah. don't get it and mm-hmm. yeah. they like what separates your comedy from anybody else is the fact that your brain like cooked the idea like yeah. it comes from an angle your brain spins so like sometimes you like the best place to get it like I think the first place you should always get it out is on stage for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, because like if your friend goes like, eh, I don't like it immediately. Your brain is just kind of like, well, that kind of sucks, mm-hmm. you know? So, but after a certain while when you bomb, it's like, it, it's just work. You you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you have to remove the personal from you it. You have to compartmentalize. Yes. Yeah, and, but, but you know, in. but when you kill, it becomes like, like if I kill now, I still to a fault have a little bit of like an ego. Come on, boys! Like fucking you know, like, go, dude! I'm like get the, out the blow, I, daddy's yeah. home. But at the same time, but then it becomes like at a certain point, it's like, yeah, I better fucking do that. I need to yeah. do that every night. I feel four like times. The, the more I get up, the less I feel a response to however I did on stage. So yeah. it's like if it's like kind of pandemic-y and I'm not getting up as much, every set feels more important. But if I'm like you know lucky enough to be booked a lot, I'm like. It doesn't feel as significant how something goes on stage. Yeah. One thing I try to remind myself is like right before the pandemic happened, like I just felt like I was this fucking hot shot. Like I had an East Village apartment. I was like lived two blocks away from my fucking comedy club. Like I was wearing a leather jacket. I was like life rules. I used to, I was hot. And then like you start to take all of that shit for granted where I would literally go like, fuck, I got to go do two fucking sets at the stand on a Friday night. And I'd be like, oh, I want to like stay inside. Mm-hmm. And like after the once the pandemic happened, I was like, all right, before every fucking set, I try to remind myself like, dude, you once took the shit for granted. You get to do this again. Mm-hmm. Don't be a fucking cunt about it. Center yourself. Go do the thing and and have fun every time you go on stage it's fucking exciting that you get to do that it's fucking awesome that you get to be there what chloe yes i have advice yes um jamie kennedy told me that he said that um no matter how bad you feel no matter how sick no matter how depressed no matter anything always go on stage no matter how you're feeling always get on stage. the best sets are when you hate yourself jamie kennedy i mean he's top five great comic yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he's, 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 he's been doing it forever. He's a great guy. He's funny. Paco, is the sound on out there? I've never seen him. Oh, my God. He does stand up. He's on the road. Do you, do you know who Jamie Kennedy yeah, is? Yeah, Malibu's Most Wanted yeah. was a fucking bop. Be rad. He's, <laughs> he's in all the screams. I just love. I'm going to name this episode Shit Talking with Love and Chloe. <laughs> yeah. That's all we do all day. Uh, I have your video. Oh, guys, so I live on twitch.tv slash Natalie Cuomo. And yesterday on Twitch, I brought out my new toys. And this these are my- They let you do that on Twitch? Yeah. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> hey, Chloe just became bookable. Hey, hey Chloe, Chloe, fo- follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Those are my toys. These, and, are, my fun uh, ba- these are my fun bags. 
<laughs> um, okay, so yesterday I brought my, I was just testing out my new audio. Guys, I, I fucking put together, I took two edibles and put together <laughs> a gaming chair on stream. And then I also set up my new audio shit. But anyway, I'm showing everyone my toys. And my dog took one in the middle and started playing with it. I thought it was really cute, wholesome content to show you. What's with the weed? You used to not smoke weed, right? And now you do it a lot? Watch my video. It's snowing. Look, wait, go to the beginning, Paul. It's very subtle where he, my dog steals it. Look. Ready? Look. He steals it. Oh. He steals my toy. He steals the toy and he starts Guys, playing with it. This. Oh, I don't want to he hear my He stole voice. my implant. He stole your implant. Wait, no, no. He's playing with it, Paul, the whole video. Oh, that's my world. That's my little character. She's wearing her pajamas. Oh, I will. I'll download Aww. the whole nightmare. So I Look. Have to show. I have to leave and like. They're, I love these people. But I gotta show you. How many people are watching this? <sighs> Two million. Oh, yeah. <laughs> these are these are my these are my people. The people on my Twitch, you don't understand. You both don't understand how much I love these people. I don't. No, you don't. I love them. I want that. I am. I have a. Do you know Discord? Yeah, I have a Discord. I have a time I got. Do you, do you stream on Twitch? I used to. It, it's, it just takes too much of my time. Oh. Yeah. But I just moved all those people to Discord, and we have a very fun... Yeah? We have a fun chat in there. I yeah. prefer mm -hmm. be. Anyway, um, that's great. It's, a, it's an amazing community. Yeah. Anyway, I fucking love them, so... Yeah. It, I mean, I, I don't think it's a surprise they're going to be nice to you on Twitch. Like... What is this, love? Love, what's your problem? What do you mean problem? Just stop saying, like, yeah, of course. Like, they're going to be like, they're going to love you Let's there. kill him. We're not like, killing people. Why, We're killing why boys. Why is it a surprise? People are mean everywhere. Can you do a sound because drop, Paul? Twitch is very re rewarding to hot chicks that game. That's like the whole. Do this one from Psycho. I Twitch stream in a wig. <laughs> like, fucking. You do? Try to hit the algo. <laughs> Twitch. Twitch <laughs> is Black literally person. Discord. Is like my happy place. Twitch, my happy. I love these people. Um, I ordered a Furby on Amazon. Why? I'm lonely. Yeah, little Furbies little are little really little. a lot. And I got a Tamagotchi. Why these old-fashioned toys? I'm old-fashioned. I only do missionaries. Stop interrupting the podcast. What? Just kidding. Oh shit. <laughs> I like that your mic was on. It's very cute. Yeah, she's gonna. I feel like we haven't been useful to you today. I'm sorry. No, uh, Chloe's dad was wildly useful. Is he hot? He's a good looking guy. How old? 65. What's the oldest you fucked? Don't answer that, Chloe. Answer it. What You go? You as well, love. <laughs> um, 38. Really? That's the oldest you fucked? Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? 32. What's the oldest you fucked? 19. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I like to keep it, you know. No, really. Come on. Don't fuck around. Um... Yeah. Honestly, for a fuck, my girlfriend might be the oldest. She's 26. I feel like everything was... I had, that One time I went home, I was going to go home with this 35-year-old lady, and I was like 19. And my, my friends were like... I, I was sitting at the bar with my friends. She was right, like, right there. I was like, should I do it? And my friends were like, yeah. Know. They were like, she's going to rock your fucking world. What about us? Paco is dying to come in. <gasps> Paco! Paco, Paco, Paco. Yeah. Come here for a sec. Paco. Paco! What's, What's the oldest you fucked? Oldest person? Yeah. Don't point to me. No. <laughs> I want to say like 27? Yeah, How right? What you? about you, Natalie? How old are you? I'm 31. You're 31? You're 31? The oldest person you fucked is 27? I, you like 21. I literally thought he was like 22 years yeah. old. What the fuck? The oldest person you fucked is 27? Yeah. Get out. I, anyways, this, oh, all right. I what go about home Natalie? What about you, Paul? What about you? Forty-two. Okay, thank you, Paul. How old are you? You're. Oh, I know how old Paul is. Okay, Paul is twenty-eight. Natalie, your turn. No, you are sick. You are all <laughs> sick. Sick in the head. He was my lover. You guys are sick people. I went home with this thirty-five-year-old chick. We started hooking up mm -hmm. she's taking her clothes off and she goes all right two things about me she mm -hmm. goes one i'm very religious and she's like two once i fuck somebody i get very attached so i'm like all right this is just not happening now i just left at 19 you said this is not happening yeah i was ari shafir i thought of that as well <laughs> Guys. sick reference dude Thank you dude i feel there we go paul's got my back you're texting chloe 
Um, it's actually my um my sponsor. Oh, I have to meet her at three o'clock. Oh, how far is it? It's at the Marlton Hotel. Nobody follow me. How far is it? <laughs> Do you need a ride? <laughs> it's on Eighth Street. Do you need a ride? If you want. I can't believe you guys don't do anything scandalous sexually. Oh, no. I've done scandals. I've done scandals. I used to have like a threesome every night on the road. I had... With his, whom? Like people from the show. What do you mean? Threesomes? I, yeah, yeah, with his... Yeah. With, I'm the, a, with I'm the, a, the club owner <laughs> <laughs> and the bathroom attendant. I got to pay back the booker. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we didn't sell any tickets, but you can have my body. Uh, thanks again for having me. <laughs> is it is it always two girls or a guy and a girl? Always or two, two guys? Girls. I've never done a two guy. Yeah. You were so funny. What? I have never... I just don't want to enter a I penis I have never contest. had a threesome. I have... Had maybe a with great my great time maybe. on this podcast. <laughs> as soon as it goes into anything about her, she's like, and that's the show, folks. I usually overshare, right, Paul? Sure do. Are you kidding me? That's all I do. Paul, let's talk. Paul. Paul is like my brother. Oh. He is. You guys look nothing alike. What are you talking about? Lev, I need to know this about you. What? What's your birthday? December 15th. That's S- are you exactly, a Sagittarius? Exactly. Yeah. Wait, Natalie, what's yours? December 17th. So oh, you, you guys are both Sagittarius. The thing is, I'm very compatible with Sagittarius's. Very compatible, very similar, but we will never work together. It's I'm a Pisces. Tri- I know. I'm a triple water sign. What's your actual birthday? March 15th, Ides of March, the day Caesar was stabbed. Beware. Yeah. I'm very similar to other Sagittarius's, but for some reason, there's always a. Hmm. I know <laughs> Sagittarius's who I can never be with. My chick is a Leo. Yeah, there's, it's grounded. fiery. So is Hopper. It's gonna be fiery when I burn her fucking apartment down in a week. Why? Just a lot of the ta- the yapping. Yapping. You yapping, call it yapping. yapping. <laughs> no, no, I dated, my girlfriend rules. I this. dated this guy, and he used to fuck with me as as a joke when we go out to dinner. We were, we were like getting along fine, but I'd be talking, but just to embarrass for me in front of other tables, he would just go. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and, then, funny. and then the other people would be like, oh my God. That's and I'd really be like, funny. fuck you, I do Stuart. shit like that to my chick all the time. <laughs> my friend's That's little brother trick. used to do this in parking lots at like grocery stores. <laughs> He was also like 20 years old at the time. He would st- he would like they'd be in the parking lot with all the cars and he would go like this and re- go in a circle and go, "What are you waiting for?" <laughs> yeah. And everyone would be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Where did you grow up? Queens. Oh, you're from here. Where okay. you did you grow up? No, I'm from down south. North, North Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina. Oh. How far back did you He's like the out? famous Jet Jackson. When did you start doing comedy? Uh, Since he was a eight, baby, eight years ago. Eight years ago? Yeah, yeah, I was seventeen. Probably like. Did you? When did you move to New York? The week I turned eighteen. He was at the stand since he's eighteen. He's no. like their product. Yeah, you've been at the stand since nineteen. I was like twelve. When? When do you feel like? Wow, interesting. So you always wanted to do stand up? Yeah, I, I got on stage for the first time at fourteen, but I was like, this is. Who this in is your crazy. life like encouraged you to to continue? Honestly, not a lot of people. I most I had a couple teachers that were like, you know what, fuck it, dude, go take a risk. Like, but most people were very, what are you crazy? Like, you're gonna fucking be broke. Like, uh, people project all their fears on you. When do you, you have a sister? A no, I have an older brother. Huh. Oh, you never met his brother. I've never Jesus spoken Christ, to Lev. Chloe. God, why you... do you keep saying my family's name? Why you want me to are expose... you giving Paul so much work? Let's look up fucking Chloe's dad. Shut the fuck exactly, up. Exactly, retard. You see how fucking dumb that is to Paul do? Paul works hard enough. He doesn't want to have to sorry, bleep out all of these and things. And based on his soundboard skills, I don't think he knows how to bleep shit. He so... does know how to bleep shit. Can you shit. bleep that? Can you bleep the thing? And then maybe... No. Me send me the audio file comedy. and I'll have this bleeped and Why are you calling him his name is Paul. <laughs> you just said your brother's name again. Whatever. I hate Paul. Maybe I said your dad's name. You're my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I worry because never mind. Oh, <laughs> you're a fucking liability on a podcast. This is, what's wrong with you? I don't think we have time. <laughs> I'm starting to kind of see the picture here now. You guys are going to be fucked up for the rest of your lives. You guys take no personal responsibility. <laughs> Don't fucking scoff at me. I'm not your butler. <laughs> your butler. <sighs> oh my god. I you... love how you waited till the end of the episode to say 
<laughs> Natalie. <laughs> I got to go to talk to my sponsor. <laughs> I, t- I, t- I, t- I need help, too. Yeah. Uh, we can cut it out. It's fine. We'll do whatever we want. Okay. I've, Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at her? I, yo, this is like a, the craziest podcast I've ever done. Like, Stop looking at uh, Chloe. This is insane. There's like no, it's like we're all on a fucking boat and there's no captain. It's a, Paul's over here fucking up sound. I'm the captain bitch. now. <laughs> fucking Chloe's giving my social security number out. It's like, 095. I'm the captain this bitch. This is insanity. What's your number? No, I don't want that. I'm on your SSN. I'm trying to get in your bank account. Oh, guys, where can people find you? You can find me. Uh, I'm going to rehab now. Like, this is, I don't know what this did to me, but I feel like bitch, my brain. Go broken. to Malibu. Jesus Christ. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Chloe LeBranch. There's an E at the end. I'm twitch.tv slash Natalie Cuomo. Thank you. And <laughs> you can find me in Natalie Cuomo's car. <laughs> it's nice, right? It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Those are my plugs. That's my only plug. Lev, come on. You're not too good for this. Lev I'm Fur. Not, you're at, not too at good Lev for Fur this, Lev. Instagram. His Instagram is at Lev Fur. You're not too good for this. I'm not Lev. saying I'm and too good for this. And he has a podcast. good He has a podcast, The Lev Fur Show. This needs a male co host. Lev? <laughs> it's Lev. Lev, is this your way of telling me you want to work together more? Yes, he wants to be your co-host. Oh, uh, Based on this experience, no. Lev, but maybe, I'll do your podcast. Maybe, you don't. You can ask. It's I don't okay. even do my podcast. I'll come on. I'll be a guest. He only lets me do the Patreon. Oh, that's, that's all I've been doing. I'm not. Even, people are paying me on the Patreon. I didn't even put out the last two episodes. Wow. It's a good way to promote it. Loyalty. So yeah, if you want to join the Patreon, there's about a 33% chance you'll get what you're paying for. <laughs> it's so, all a numbers game, baby. Yeah, feel free to jump. You know what I mean? Like, is is that, is if not getting an episode, is that really worse than getting an episode sometimes? So. You know, so, when, it, when it's your content. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <clears throat> you're going to have that for a while. Okay, Fauci. <laughs> You can find me. My, I'm really hungry. I'm really hungry. You can find me on Instagram at Natalie Cuomo underscore. As always, subscribe on YouTube, YouTube.com slash Natalie Cuomo and Twitch, baby. Twitch.tv slash Natalie Cuomo. Hang out with me and Blathers. You know that I don't like Blathers that much, but I love Celeste, his twin. And I am so happy to shoot some shooting stars on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Natalie Cuomo. Come hang out. Tune in next week for another episode. Love you. Bye. Roll Tide. Thanks for listening to Help with Natalie Cuomo. Tune in next week for another episode. Find us on social media at Help with Natalie.